Hi there and welcome back to my channel. My name is Marianne and in this tutorial I'll be teaching you step by step how to paint poppies into a sketchbook. I'll be using oil but if you paint in acrylics or gouache you can still follow along. I'll be including some modifications so you can participate too. As always, I'd love if you would take the time to like, subscribe, and comment on this video to help me continue to build this channel. Let's get started. We're going to start by putting in the drawing, which is something I normally head into right away with ballpoint pen. However, for this spread, because I am using multiple reference photos to cobble together my composition, I'm using a light graphite pencil to gently sketch in the drawing to make sure I'm happy before committing to the pen. I get a lot of questions about my preferred sketchbooks, and my absolute favorite right now is the Stillman & Burn Zeta series, which has hot pressed paper and is nice and smooth for painting. I've linked all of the supplies for the video in the description below. I used a bunch of different poppy photos from Unsplash, which is a copyright-free image website. I'll link which ones I used in the description below so you can follow along if you'd like. Once the drawing is complete, I go over the whole thing with ballpoint pen. I recently found the Uniball Signo Ultra Micro Pen in size 207, and I absolutely love it. The ink really glides and doesn't glob nearly as much as my other ballpoint pens. You might be asking yourself if you need to add the pen in or if you can just leave the pencil as is, but if you're going to tone your pages in the next step, the answer is that you'll definitely need the pen. The acrylic ink makes the pencil lines completely invisible, so this helps me maintain my drawing once the pages are toned. In my last botanical sketchbook tutorial of the Lily of the Valley, one of the oops moments that I had was when I was adding the writing to the pages. Because I was dodging my filming equipment and trying to work around cameras, I wound up putting everything in on an angle, which I think looks pretty silly. To prevent this from happening again, I found these line templates on Amazon, and since pencil does vanish under acrylic ink, I could add in some lines with pencil to use as a guide for incorporating the writing with the ballpoint pen. Whenever people see these spreads on social media or in person, I always get asked what the writing says. In my sketchbooks that are devoted to learning, such as the book on flowers or the book I keep for birds, I often fill the pages with notes about the species that I'm painting. However, for this particular spread, given the meaning of poppies, I decided to pay tribute by transcribing two famous poems from World War I. The first poem included is In Flanders Fields by John McCrae, and the second is Dulce a Decorum Est by Wilfred Owen. If you're following along with the tutorial, you can write whatever you'd like into the background. You can make notes on poppies or journal about your own life. What's beautiful about these books is that they are so personal, so you can choose to write or not write, whatever works best for you. Once the spread is fully drawn and written in, it's time to tone the pages. I use these acrylic inks by Liquitex Professional and they are awesome. For this spread, I am using transparent burnt umber with a little bit of Prussian blue to prevent the burnt umber from leaning too orange. First, I spray down the pages and you'll want to make sure you clip them first because they will start to curl. Clearly, I forgot to do that and had to throw some clips on, but it's fine because these pages will forgive you and flatten themselves again if they're clipped while wet. Then, I dropped on the burnt umber and Prussian blue with a higher brown to blue ratio but I still found that when I started to smush them together that the blue was turning the pages too green. So I quickly grabbed some paper towel, wiped off the excess, and added more burnt umber to bring the pages back to a nice antique brown. After, I sprayed the pages with some water to create an aged effect and let the whole thing dry. 
When the pages are fully dry, because this is an oil painting sketchbook, you have to seal the pages to prevent the oil from seeping in. If you're following along as an acrylic or gouache painter, you can skip this step. First, bring your book into a well-ventilated space or outside like what I did. Making sure that the pages are completely clipped, I sprayed mine down with shellac, which seals the pages and keeps the oils resting on top instead of settling into the paper fibers. After the pages are fully dry, and I usually wait at least overnight and do more than one coat, you can begin to paint. For this piece, I am using quinacridone red, cadmium red, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and titanium white. As you can see, there is a lot of cadmiums in there, and that's because I wanted the poppies to maintain that warm, intense saturation that they're known for. I barely used any of the orange or yellow and almost exclusively used pure cadmium and quinacridone red. I'm sometimes asked how I get the petals to look like they're gently fluttering or wrinkled, and the trick is to just use subtle variations of color. With these poppies, the parts of the petal that are catching the sun are layered in using pure cadmium red, and where they ripple, I switch the red to quinacridone, and if I want to darken it a bit, I add just a bit of burnt umber. Any reds that appear darker or more purple in the reference photo are quinacridone, but the majority is cadmium red. For the darker centers, if I'm using burnt umber and I need to darken it further, I'll add ultramarine blue. But because of the warmth of these poppies, I'm warming up even the dark centers with a hint of quinacridone red. So if you were to really zoom in, you would see that the centers are actually a rich, dark purple. Near the end of my first page, I was actually starting to get a little frustrated with my brushes because so many of my detail brushes that I use for oils are starting to get old and need to be replaced. Fortunately, I was recently sent this fine line miniature brushes set by Zen Art Supplies and this felt like the perfect piece to test them out on. Now a quick disclaimer here, although I was gifted these brushes, integrity truly matters to me and I will never showcase any product on this channel that I don't personally believe in. I can, however, tell you that these brushes are fantastic. I wasn't expecting to like the comfort grip of the handles when I first saw them because I'm used to very thin brushes, but I actually really liked that about the brush. It felt really nice and solid in my hand. I used a small filbert to really get into some of the nooks and crannies of the petals and a flat to do some blending. Later, you'll see me using a round from the set to get a nice thin line on the stems. I will continue to test drive these brushes in future works, but my initial impressions are very positive, and if you're interested in giving them a shot, I've included a link in the description below. While I was painting, I'd use a hint of liquid in the paint to make sure that it would dry overnight. If you're painting in acrylic, I would use a hint of gloss medium in the paint to help it blend a little better and to add some richer saturation and depth to the colors. After all the poppies were added in, I let the spread dry overnight before adding in some text with liquid acrylic ink. I absolutely love using metallic inks in these spreads because it truly feels like magic when you're flipping through the pages in person. For this spread, I decided to use Liquitex's Iridescent Gold. I added the writing in before the stems simply because the flowers were dry and I didn't want to worry about smudging any wet paint. Here is where I added in my usual notes on the plant and superimposed information about poppies over top of the poems running subtly in the background. For example, in the upper left corner, I added in the various botanical classifications of poppies, including the order, family, and genus of the plant. To finish up the spread, I added in some buds and stems, 
but completely desaturated the greens in order to maintain the old-fashioned vintage feel of the spread. To do this, I used burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and cadmium orange in various combinations to create a muddy brown green. If it needed to be darker, I would add more burnt umber and ultramarine. To warm it, I'd add more orange, red, or a hint of titanium white for the small hairs that are found on the outside of the unfurled buds. Greens can be tricky to mix, but I found that using the cadmium orange instead of the yellow, which you'd normally mix with the blue to create green, kept the color feeling warm and earthy. And with that, this spread is officially complete. Thank you so much for watching and following along, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. You can also connect with me on Instagram or on Facebook, and I now have courses available through my website. Keep making your life beautiful, and I'll see you in the next video.